Hello and welcome to this late morning taste challenge. We have two Scotch whiskeys, single malt Speyside Scotch whiskeys. We have from a company a distillery established in 1890, <clears throat> 1879. Sorry, 1879. We have the Glen Rothes, 1995. It was barreled in 1995 and aged and then bottled in 2013, okay? 18 year aged. Thank you to Robert the Whiskey Scout for this fabulous gift. Uh, it's made by a company called Barry Brothers and Rudd Limited, St. James Street, London. So, um, Checked by a guy named something Ramsey or whatever. Checked on uh, October 26, 1995. And then the malt master approved it on June 9th, 2010. But it was distilled in 95 and bottled in 2013. Okay, 43% alcohol. Here we have another 86 proof product. Now, I bought this one at Walmart, and it was $27. I think the 18-year age, the Glen Rothes, 1995, is a considerable amount more. But Tomat in Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Oh, I said Space Out. I'm sorry. Highland. Sorry. Sorry. They're both single malt. Duolcus, cultural heritage. Duolcus means legacy in uh, Gaelic, so... But there is legacy Canadian whiskey in the USA, so there's a trademark problem. So instead of worrying about a trademark problem, they just use the Gaelic name. All right, so in, if you go to Europe and buy it or Canada, it's gonna be called cultural legacy, cultural heritage or legacy, you know, the traditional one. But here it's called Dualcus, same, it means the same thing. Highlands since 1897, the softer side of the Highlands. Okay, softer side of the Highlands. Uh, and they show a crown with a, like a pig's head and then a, two lions attacking it, embossed. So Walmart has this one. They also have, and it's imported by USDP Princeton, Minnesota. Who is that, United States? Dis Dealing properties. I, I know it's some importing company. Uh, they have a pretty importing portfolio. And this is imported by Anchor Distilling Company. Anchor, you know, over there in San Francisco. So that's interesting. Now I was looking at Barry Brothers and Rudd website. Look at all the different whiskeys they've got. Scotch whiskeys. I can't show them all. They list 185 that you can buy. Well, I mean, I'm not going to buy them over the internet. I could buy them at a store. Old Pulteney, 12 year old. Now, there's a Tomatin 12 year at Walmart, also. I'm going to buy that one next. The Glen Rothes Whiskey Makers Cut, 48.8% alcohol. Wow. Isla, a uh, Kilcoman Isla whiskey. Compass Box Great King Street Artist Blend, blended scotch. Orkney Highland Park, 12-year-old. Glen Farkas, Glen Farkless, 15-year-old, Speyside, 46 proof. Starwood, two-fold blended malt whiskey, Australia, blended malt whiskey, not single malt, but blended malt. Berry Brothers and Rudd Classic Range, Guatemala rum. Wait a minute, that's rum. I said whiskey. That didn't work. Their little, little search tool didn't work. River Rock Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Berry Brothers and Rudd. They got classic sherry cask, classic space side blended malt, classic Isla blended malt, classic pita cask. Then there's one called Glen Kadam, 10 year old Highland single malt, Campbelltown, Kilcarran. Okay, so Kilcarran, 12 year old, 46. I can't read the Ardbeg, 5 Wee Beastie, Starward Leftfield single malt. Campbelltown, Longbro, Ben Romach, 10 year, Ball Blair, 12 year, Breek Lodic, the classic Laddie, 50%, the Glen Turret, Triple Wood, 43%, all these, Lafroig, 
quarter cask, Isla, 48%. Barry's Altmore, Auctiontoshin, Three Woods. Okay, it goes on and on. Glen Glare, Glen Garrock, 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 Port Askaig, 100 proof. And on and on until the break of dawn. All right. Pretty fabulous, pretty fabulous. Tomatin, it says uh, matured in a combination of bourbon barrels and virgin oak casks. So bourbon barrels, old bourbon barrels, and virgin oak. Uh, I mean, it has not been used before. Um, check something real fast. Tomato. Okay, never mind. Um, there's also a 12 year, which I told you I'm gonna buy at Walmart. There's cast strength, 14 year, 18 year, 30 year, 36 year. Bet you the 36 year is not 27 bucks. <laughs> I think that's pretty obvious. It would not be. Okay, so what, which one's going to win? I don't know. If I knew which one was going to win, I wouldn't bother doing the taste challenge. I'll just tell you that I like this one better, but it's taste challenge. All right, so got a little foil cap, black painted foil cap, so I got to take that off. Got a wooden cat, uh, crown, wooden... Stopper with a real cork, not the particle board cork. Real hunk of cork. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's spilling. It's pretty dark. 18 years in the barrel. Now the tomat and to Alcus Legacy. Also, real cork, not the particle board cork. Real hunk of cork wood. Didn't get that. Correct. Go back to the Glen Ruth has got to put a little bit more, I'm, I'm afraid. TG, the Glen Ruth is TG. That's what their tags say, TG. Don't want to waste it, though. All right. Go rinse my hands off because of the little spillage. Sometimes these bottles, they don't pour so well. Be dribbling. I love looking at these companies' websites because they'll list like 50 different Scotch brands, you know, that they control or do business with. And you can never get them all. You know, you'd never be able to do it. But you'd love, you're just imagining like, oh, how exciting it would be to taste them all. Same thing with beer. You know, you look at these beer websites, it's like, it's like, oh, I bet that would be great. I bet that would be great. Appearance. Well... They're both 46 proof, so I don't have to worry about the alcohol level throwing it off. The 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 the, the, the Glen Rothis is a little bit darker, a little bit darker. So it's more like amber, whereas the Tomatin 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 Legacy Duocus is gold. So I don't want to be looking down at the glasses because there is a slight, well, I guess a pretty significant difference, amber versus gold. If I glance, I'd, I'd be able to tell, and I don't want to mess up the challenge. I could just spend all my time right there at Walmart half a mile away and never branch out and I would get all the single malts I'd ever have time to address in my life. 
I mean, it just, and then the therns right there, you'd never, you'd never use them. You'd never go through them all. And then there's Winn-Dixie, but Winn-Dixie is so expensive. You will, you, you lose all your money going over there. <laughs> but, uh, and then you stumble across some, sometimes they have these ridiculously low prices. So anyway, I would, look, when I did the solo review of the, um, when I did the solo review of the, the Glen Rothis, it was nice and I liked it and I gave it a high score, but I didn't find it was like super outstanding or anything, even though it was age 18 years, I just didn't see where it was like, oh, this is great. That's an eight-year-old bottle, right? So it wasn't like, oh man, you know, I can't believe it. But I had the same experience with the Johnny Walker Blue Label and that was $226 plus tax. And I thought, I paid all this money. This thing is so ordinary. But when I put it into the taste challenges, it destroyed everything. So sometimes as a solo act, you don't get it. It's like, I don't get this. It's not that great. But when you start doing taste challenges, It'll wipe, it'll wipe out the competition, destroy the competition. And that's what the Johnny Walker Blue Label did against all the other blended scotch. Just tore them up. There might have been one little aberration in that mix, but it just, just plowed through them. This smells like um, whiskey, <laughs> um, but it does. You know what I'm saying? Like barley malt whiskey, distilled grain. I don't know how to communicate it to you. It smelled like distilled grain that was aged in oak barrels. That might sound very elementary, but that's my perception of it. Clearly has oak, clearly has the oak and bread dough. So, you get a little vanilla from the oak. Um, on aroma, appearance, they both look fine. So it's it's a draw there. I mean, it's not like, oh, wow, this one looks. Both smell nice, like a mild Scotch whiskey. Okay, so that's so far we're even. The only big difference is price. I don't know what the price is for the Glen Rothis 18 year age, 1995, but my I know it's way more than $27. And I mean, way more. I think Robert got a good deal on them from a store he said went out of business. So that's good. I like to stumble across these deals too. But um, in, in a normal sense, first of all, you're probably not gonna find it since it was bottled eight years ago. And secondly, if you do find it, you're probably not going to want to buy it because the price is going to be so high. Whereas I say tomato, and I get at Walmart for $27. Okay. Taste time. I like 86 proof whiskeys. They give you a little more cachet than the 80 proof. Not to say I don't like 80 proof. I do. 90 is a little much for me. Once you get to 90, it's like kind of pushes me away. 86 is a good balance. 80 is fine and nice and mellow and mild and copacetic and all that. This tastes like a uh, toast. Toasted oak. Like an old wooden toasted oak barrel. So it's very mild. Everything about that is mild, 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 mild. You say, what about peat? What about smoke? Forget that. That's not in this. Not in that. Maybe a little vanilla, but I, no peat, no smoke. Not that I can detect. Boy, I hope the sun, come on, sun. I hope the sun comes out because if it does, if I get two hours of sun, I can go cut that grass because the yard drains pretty well. But oh, just okay.
I don't know what Linda's honking at. All right, or honking too. Probably leaving to go to that wake. I was at, it's not a wake, is it? It's a visitation. Wake is at night. They don't do wakes anymore. I don't know. I used to like the wakes. All right. This one, I mean, like them in the sense of uh, relative to other funeral, funereal events. I don't say I like it at all. You know what I'm saying? But uh, a lot of wood here and it's spicy and vanilla. It's kind of like seasoned wood. I don't know how to describe it. Seasoned spicy wood. Mm. Oh, it seems a little bit more complex. It is more complex. It must be the 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 the, the, the Glen Far the Glen Rothes. I can't say the word Glen Rothes. Mackerel says, I watched the Hurricane Mystery Challenge. I'm gonna go get one in an hour and I'm out of stout. <laughs> that was a fun taste challenge. My friend David was really thrown off he was fooled and when he saw the bot when he saw the can he was like what <laughs> we did a do a review of the bottled version because i had bought a bottle in baton rouge i can get 40 ounce bottles glass in baton rouge never see him around here for hurricane oh back in the 90s we used to get the hurricane six percent then when the high gravity hit the market around here it's the six percent was gone pretty fast never to be seen again uh same thing happened with uh mick the the uh, steel reserve 211 but it was in reverse we used to get the high gravity here 8.1 bottles cans everywhere then the six percent hit the market in 2003, you never saw the high gravity around these parts anymore. Nope. Nope. And everybody sells uh, steel reserve around here. Mathern sells it, and they're not a malt liquor place, believe me. They mo mostly deal in, like, you know, they like rather deal with craft beer, but they got that steel reserve, and it sells, boy. Food for Less has steel reserve. Um, I don't know about Winn-Dixie. Oh, well, of course, all the gas stations, you know. Meaning all the liquor store, because in Louisiana, a gas station is a liquor store. And Walmart is a liquor store. I saw adult beverages. That's their new sign. Adult beverages. Um, you can just walk in and pull it off the shelf at Walmart. You don't have to ask the lady behind the counter, get me that. Oh, give me that. You know, you just grab it. Now, some of the stuff they worried about, I guess people steal it, so they got it locked up. Uh, okay, so this one here in my left hand. Can't look. It's kind of bland, like, and I think I remember saying that about Tomatin from the get-go. That was kind of bland. Like, well, it's okay. It's well made. I mean, you know, they are distilling and bottling and aging and all aging and bottling you know it's probably to the total pinpoint accuracy been around since 1897 i did think i do think they went out of business for a little bit like about a year and then they got bought out but uh it is aged four to eight years youngest whiskey's four the oldest whiskey's eight years in that single malt of uh, the malt the 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 malts they're using, the malt whiskeys, but it's at a single distillery. Uh, but that's what they said on their website. I was looking on, on a video that they made. They were doing a tasting at their headquarters over there in Scotland, and the lady was saying, she said, well, it doesn't have an age statement, actually, but uh, it is four to eight years. That's your range. So, I mean, if they're saying it and they making it, they obviously know what it is. So then there, uh, there you go. So it's on the younger side, you know. This is 18 years. It's not young. Is it a single barrel, single batch, a small batch? Well, I guess it's a small batch because I don't think they make a lot of it. A uh, single barrel? Uh, I don't see anything on here about that. 
So I would assume that is not the case. I got to go. I, I'm kind of confident, but I'm not totally confident. But you would think 18 year age versus a four to eight year range, like say six year age average, should be a blowout. Like there should be no competition. Yeah, it should be, but uh, they're both 86 proof, and uh, these things can really discombobulate you. Kevin Johnson, I haven't missed out on the Doer's 12 year review, have I? No. No, I talk about it all the time. My friend David blew through his bottle, this big handle bottle. I said, where's your doers? He said, that's been going. I said, what? You drank through a whole big bottle like that? We got the greatest deal in the world on it. I'm serious. Like when I tell you all the price for that handle, it's a big glass handle bottle. You know, it's not like some little mini bottle. You'll say, you lie, you lie, you lie. I'm not lying. Couldn't pass that up. And I didn't even need it. It's like, I don't need this doers right now, but I got no, 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 no. We don't we don't pass up those kind of deals unless we've gone mad. And I haven't gone mad yet. I might tomorrow. Who knows? I might wake up tomorrow talking about the Cubans are spying on me through my TV. Who knows what will happen? Which TV? The one in the bedroom. They watch me. Cubans. All right. Um wood. And distilled barley malt. I mean, that's it's that's it. And toasted, you know, it's mild. All right. Do I like the tomato? Oh, sure, I like it. Love that twenty-seven dollar price. Um, would I recommend it? Sure, I'd recommend it. You want a mild, like they say on the bottle, the softer side of the Highlands. You want a soft. If you want to say bland, okay, I wouldn't take issue with that description, but I try to avoid those. I like to say like mellow and mild, but okay. It's fine. Now you say, I want it bold. I want it intense. I want this to be a challenge to drink, man. That's how I roll. Well, you know, tomato ain't gonna work. <laughs> it's like you say, I wanna listen to some, you know, the hardest heavy metal, and then you play the Carpenters. Well, that wouldn't really, it's not even the same type of music. Oh, well, okay, you put on Dio, you know. Oh, I was listening to Dio. The Last in Line. Well, that's what this is like, mild and mellow. Uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's a good example there because he's kind of like the Carpenters, mild and mellow and not hard. I, I remember people was all into Dio. Oh, yeah, I love heavy metal. I was like, that's not, it's not really heavy metal. You know, it's kind of like not heavy. It's kind of metallic, I guess, in a way, because they're using, I, I don't know, I just, I said, I can't get into it too much, you know? I mean, the songs are okay. They're nice pop songs, but um, I remember telling kids in the in the mid eighties, I was like, I don't, I don't know if I'm into all this pop metal, you know? And I don't mind songs about, you know, soldiers and kings and dragons and rings and and the lady in the castle and all of that and it's fine i guess but uh, i don't know i might i think i'd rather listen to to carpenters <laughs> and oh so far away all right anyway I'm telling you right now, there ain't nothing intense about either one of these. These are not intensities in 10 cities. They're just mild, mellow. They're like a 2006 Toyota Corolla. 
they they're nice. My grandma has one. She goes to the store in it. You know what I'm saying? She enjoys it. It's easy to park. It gets wonderful gas mileage. And I like Corollas. I like the concept behind the car. I owned one and I was very pleased with it, you know, but I bought a very unusual version. But anyway, um, that's how these are. So they're not going to be like a 1968 Mustang California special with the, you know, 289K engine. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it, they, they, they're not made to be that way. They're made to be mild. And is there any kind of indictment against mild? I don't think there is. Were you affected by the pipeline issues? I'm not aware I am, but if the price of gas spikes through the roof, I guess I am. What's a good 5% dark beer? Macro says, a good 5% dark beer. Um, well, how about Michelob Amberbach? Because sometimes it's 4.9, then the next time you see bottles, it'll say 5.2, it varies. It varies. Like literally the bottles will say different ABVs on them. It might be changed every six months. That's around five. That's a good one. Siegenbach, if, but you can't probably can't find that one. It means Billy Goat. Um well, why not get Modelo Negro from Mexico? Is what 5.4 or is it 5.2? Am I thinking of 5.4? Am I thinking of um, you know, George Killian's Irish Red Lager? That's 5.4. I'm getting confused. You say you drank 86 proof scotch. You know you get. It's not that I just can't remember. Um, but those are good choices, like George Killian's Irish Red Lager, Modelo Negra, and Amberbach, Michelob mm -hmm. Amberbach. Those are three good uh, dark. Around 5% ABV lagers. There's your answer. I would have said, I would have said uh, Heineken Dark, but they don't uh, make it available anymore to my great dismay. <laughs> I thought that was the last drop and it was like a gush coming out. All right. <laughs> I'm glad it was good. Mm, yummy, 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 yummy. But I'm still thinking, okay. Now, here's the really serious part to talk about. I think the Glenn Rothis is better, okay? But let's say the bottle is like $70 as opposed to $27. Is it worth $70 as opposed to $27? My answer is going to be no way, Jose. No way, Joseph. Uh-uh. It's not going to work. It does not work. It's better it, it, it's better in a theoretical sense. You know what I'm saying? Like hypothetically, theoretically. But in a practical sense. Nah, man, I just paid the twenty seven dollars. You they both 86 proof. And um, there's nothing wrong with either one. I mean, we talking about a trade off of the most minim minimal proportion. So I'm gonna let you pay the seventy dollars. Go ahead and buy it. I mean, it doesn't it's no skin off my back, especially at least since your interests don't conflict with my interests. But um, I think Tomatin's fine. To see, Tomatin is one of those secret weapon type whiskeys. It's like cheap, relatively cheap. You know, I don't mean it's cheap like, you know, Samuel, uh, GW, TW Samuel, something like that. But uh, I did see TW Samuel straight bourbon too in Mississippi. That's no joke. That's the truth. I didn't buy it, but I saw it. I saw it. Straight bourbon. I saw it. Good price too. Um, but the thing about Tomatin, you say, what it, the problem with Tomatin or Glen Moray is that they're kind of inexpensive, but they win. They just keep being good. They're good. They're good. They don't taste cheap or cheeky or flim flam or bad. They don't, they don't exude any kind of like badness. So that makes a challenge for the expensive Scotch whiskey. So the expensive Expensive Scotch whiskeys have a real challenge on their hands because then you say, well, I paid $90 or whatever you paid. Oh, yeah? Okay. 
But then you have to ask yourself, is this really that way? Is it really way better? And then in many cases, maybe most cases, you have to honestly say to yourself, I'm trying to be honest on this channel. That's why I said in my uh, description, honest beer, wine and liquor reviews since 2010. You might say, I don't like your opinions. Your opinions are garbage. OK, fine. I think they're gold, you know, but. uh but they're honest. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not making up stuff on this channel. I'm just telling you the way I feel about it, it as outrageous as it may be. And um, I don't know if these really juiced up, highly expensive products is really making it. I could be wrong. I have a lot of exploration to do. I'm just in the early stages anyway of the channel. You say it's been like almost 11 years. I know, that's what I'm saying, the early stages of the channel anyway. So I have a long way to go, but I'm trying to figure it out. All right, so I think this is the Glen Rothis. Now, if I look below, it says TG. I got it. If it doesn't say TG, I'm going to be very intimidated, dismayed, con upset, confused, disoriented, and etc. <laughs> Well, all those things. That's what I am right now. It says TG. This is the Glen Rothis. Oh, man. Man, you know how you felt when you first listened to Revolution Number no. 9 by the Beatles? Well, I feel worse than that. I can't believe it. I got it wrong. <laughs> oh, man. I find that really, I enjoy Twisted Sister. I like Twisted Sister in the context of what it is. I mean, you know, it's like obviously meant to be a joke. And I, I like stuff like that. So they're not, they have a good attitude. They had a good outlook because they weren't, they were sort of like, Well, they were just what they were. They were obviously trying to, it's a comedy act. And it was very good. And um, I like that performance with uh, D. Snyder from Twisted Sister with Jefferson Starship. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm going to get sued. Starship at New Year's Eve, MTV New Year's Eve celebration, New York City, ball, you know, the ballroom, wherever it was in Manhattan. Um, 1985 going into 86. And they, and they picked Starship uh, for whatever reason, I guess, because they had a number one hit to bring in the new year. So they were performing a set, you know, regular songs and all. But um, their, their repertoire, Somebody to Love from 1967 and on to We Built This City on Rock and Roll. But their guest host was Dee Snyder or their guest performer. So Grace Slick is like, we're bringing on Dee Snyder. <laughs> That's a pretty interesting video to watch. D. Snyder singing, I rock myself to sleep. He obviously didn't notice the words to the song, but he just kept singing the chorus with him and Grace Slick. And he was like, uh, like that little girl whip. He was like, I whip my hair back and forth. So he was like whipping his hair back and forth. Like I rock myself to sleep. It was a great performance. You know, they were just having a good time. And I think bands that can have a good time and they're not all about, Oh, this this song has a great meaning, man. No, they were just having a good time. New Year's Eve, uh, 85, New Year's Day, 86. It was a really good performance if you watch it on YouTube. I think I watched it live. But, you know, it's just something to watch. I find that really expensive whiskey can be great, but can, so can bargain whiskeys. That's the problem. It's not that... See, the problem is this. It's not that really expensive whiskeys aren't great. They're great. The problem is that the cheap ones are great, you know. Oh, no, says Joe Biden's dentures. I value your opinions. You obviously know your libations. I mean, maybe I'm an expert, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. 
Don't beat yourself up over it. It's really hard doing the blind taste challenges. Well, there's no doubt about that. Uh, wow, 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 wow. Robert the Whiskey Scout's like, I'm finished with you. <laughs> I brought this whiskey to you, and you're going to tell me it's no better than uh, Tomatin, Dualcus? Well, I'm telling you right now, I did the taste challenge. I couldn't tell them apart. I ain't drinking anymore. I'm going to taste a little bit more of the, yeah, a little bit more. Oh, it was the Glen Rothes I didn't pour enough of. I knew I was a little under poured. That's it. Quarter of an ounce. I think we, we can handle that. Man. Well, I wasn't, I was honestly not super confident when I did this. I was thinking, man, I could get this wrong live on air. What am I going to do? Oh, I'll just bring up like MTV shows or whatever, you know. Man. I don't know. I don't know. I can't figure it out. It's fine. I'm getting a lot of wood. I'm getting a lot of vanilla, oak, oak wood, toasted malts. But I was saying that all along. I just can't figure it out. Um, hey, well, kudos, credit to Tomatin. Hey, you did it. You did it. You showed up and you were ready to battle and you you got the win. You upset you upset the good team. So you had three wins and, and seven losses and everybody was counting you out. And that team was coming in with nine wins and one loss and you beat them. You did it. You did it. Just goes to show you now. Oh, I can't believe it. All right. Well, I can't believe it because it happened. Oh, well, too bad. So sad. You better get over it. I'm going to obviously get over it. Uh, okay, so what are we going to do on uh, Thursday morning? I think I should be able to do a taste challenge Thursday morning. Well, I'm just going to keep soldiering on, you know, like um, I'm going to do uh, Glenn Rothis versus Glenn Morey. A Rothis versus a Morey, and they're both Glens. <laughs> Hey, you remember that guy used to live down the street, Mr. Glenn Rothus, and he was uh he always used to argue with Mr. Glenn Morey. Oh yeah, they didn't like each other. Well, let's see what happens when they battle head to head. At this point, I would say anything can happen. Like Rush said, anything can happen. So if Glenn Morey wins, then it wins. That's that's the way it works. And then what's coming up after that? I'll tell you right now. The Glenn Livet family reserve. Hey, I I say the Glenn Levitt family reserve might win. You know, at this point, I, I'll say anything can happen. So I'm game. Most reviewers won't touch a live taste challenge. You got that right. They'll sell you a t-shirt though. <sighs> All right. Well, thanks for, <sighs> oh, I'm gonna get in trouble for that. Thanks for watching this video production. Y'all come back now.